You know that certain, that bit that certain, <laughs> <Bridge>. <laughs> you know certain girl have that big bit there. Wait, where you going with this though? <laughs> but like, there's beauty in that. Because one it, had so much sex appeal, but the other one was actually nicer okay. than. Okay, I said it's not okay. I told him not to do that. Do you know what Taser? He could just never play again <laughs> because I can't trust him. Nah. Taser, listen, come here, mate. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You see, some of these DJs, some of them make me fucking <laughs> sick. You know, I don't mind that on a Sunday morning after a heavy Saturday night. Yeah? But you see on Tuesday... <laughs> you see on Tuesday... Hey, last no! Night is, last we're not, night we're not doing that. We're not doing that. That is... I hate, No. Some beauty in things, and I, 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 I couldn't tell you why. Like the collarbone. Like the what? The, the collarbone. Yeah. When a girl has an exposed collarbone... <laughs> yo! <laughs> I, I don't know what it is here, yeah, but... There's some Even, girls that I know that, speaking to other guys, and they don't get the same girl that I get. Right. It's the same girl. Yeah. yeah. I'm a fucking editor now as well. <laughs> Getting it cracks. All right, boom. Before anything, actually, because I didn't even do this on the, on the last episode. Firstly, Happy New Year to the, the gang them and that, that watch and that are, like, listen regular and, you know what I mean? We, I just appreciate it still, you know? Like, touching road sometimes and seeing some of you lot is sick. I see the messages and that as well. So I do appreciate it. Couple of things, yeah. So, because I never even said this in the last episode, so I'm just going to say this today, yeah? So, just as a definitive so that people know, yeah? When it comes to the audio side of the, the podcast, as of right now, you are only able to listen to this on Apple Music, Spotify, um, and Google, and I think Deezer as well, yeah? Everyone that listens in other places and stuff, I'm going to figure out why it's not going there. But for now, this is just where it is, yeah? So we haven't stopped. I know some people are like, Rob, I'm seeing the visuals and whatnot, but like, you, you're not uploading. We are uploading, it's just there, yeah? Um, but yeah, I will figure that out. Secondly, um, the visuals, right? The visuals will always be on a Sunday and sometimes Thursday, yeah? Um, I missed the audio part. The audio is always Saturday. So the audio, Saturday, um, visuals Sunday and sometimes Thursday yeah um, the logo so switched up the logo yeah little story behind it because obviously last time we was trying to change this from last year and that but it was fucking long and then like we couldn't get designers designers you lot are fucking bro you, do you have problems with designers as well all the time it's just ridiculous <laughs> I swear to god I don't know what it is about you lot but fucking hell you lot are terrible. So anyway, it worked out really well because one day I saw Jay and me at some event or whatever. Then he asked me like, what's going on with the thing? I was like, brother, I can't get a fucking designer. He's like, I'll do it. I said, yeah, do you know what? Yeah, you can do it. So anyway, he was, we was talking on the phone about it or whatever. And then he's rang me now and he goes to me, I got the, he goes, I got the logo. I ain't done it, but I got it. I was like, what? He's like, bro, I've got the logo. I haven't done it, but I've got it. I was like, what does that even mean? He's like, bro, go on Google right now. I'm going to show you the logo. In my head, I'm like, how do you have the logo, but you don't have the logo, but you're telling me to go on Google, Google to see the logo? <laughs> it don't make no sense. But it's Jamie in it. I just go with it, yeah? So anyway, now, he's like, type in microphone. So I typed in microphone. Then he said, turn your phone the other way around. Can you see the HC? Okay, so all right, go to, I uh, know, so you might have told me a different way. Put in like, put in mic, go back and put in mic, go back, put in mic, try that. Okay, no, no, all right, how did he say it? Put like a cartoon mic. Fuck, you didn't, like, how did he tell me? What, did the way he told you worked? Yeah, the way, straight away. Okay, almost that. Almost that. It's almost this, but it wasn't this. Yeah? So then he's told me to turn the phone the other way around. I don't know if you're going to be able to do this here. That's hazy. What the the handle and the mic is the HC. Yeah, bro. Yeah, Basically, I, you get it. I can see. Yeah, so yeah. if you just look, yeah. 
But basically, the other Mac, the, what he told me to type in, it was like more emphasized. So you see like the bottom to stand mm. was more like longer. And then the C was a bit more closer and then you can see the thing. He's like, can you see it? And I was like, I couldn't see it. Then I was like, oh shit. Um, I can see it. Yeah, we can't find, I can't, I can't remember how he told me to Google it. I can't remember how he told me to Google it. Anyway, but loads of them came up anyway, yeah. No, that's it, Mike Symbol. Put in Mike Symbol. I'm sure that's what he said. Yes. Click on the, the second one. Yeah, there. Then he said, can you see the HC? Yeah. Then I was like, what? Then I, cause he told me to turn it around. Then I was like, oh shit. Then he obviously went into like the microphone, the thing, HC, whatever. And then that's where the start of it came. And then he just started developing it or whatever. He, um, and then from then I took it to someone else called Ames. Young, a young brother who actually just messaged me on uh, the, D, like he just DM'd me and was like, oh, like I'd like to do some branding thing for you or whatever. I just hit him straight away because we would come to a, like a stall with the logo. So I was like, bro, I've got this logo, but I just need it finished. I need to figure out a way for it to be finished and that. So then he started working on it. And to cut a long story short, there's actually more parts of the logo and I'll explain it to you another time once we show it all. And then the, the H and the C will be, it will become apparent what that even really means. But yeah, he ended up working on it, finished it up and that. And yeah, he's been sick. Honorable shout out to him. I'm gonna put his his uh thing on the screen. Yeah, his Instagram, cause he's a good, good guy and like, He's been like, he's he's been one of them people who anytime I've needed to get hold of him, I can get hold of him. Can be a tiny bit long, but not crazy. And he's like super keen and he's really good. And the actual animation was done by Rocket Splurge Boys. He's actually just cold. So yeah. So anyway, as time goes on, you're gonna just start seeing a little bit more um, polishing up with it. Cause there's a few things that we need to do, but I was so adamant that I was starting a new year with elements of new branding. I was not even gonna, <laughs> you see when I've got my heart set on something, bro. Have to make it, happen. it just has to fucking happen. So um, there's that. Last two things quickly as well. You know that we've got a clips channel. Yeah, we have a clips channel. Go to HC Clips. This is important for you actually, because sometimes you might see an episode that's two hours long and they might have a guest that you're not fully you might not be fully interested in, or you might see the the name of the pot, the name of the type, the title of the pod, and think, ah, oh, maybe this isn't for me. Trust me, there will probably be parts of the conversation that will be for you anyway. So if you decide that you don't want to watch the whole thing, um, then you can go to the clips channel and you'll see a breakdown of each episode and that. Yeah. And the last thing is subscribe. Fuck's sake. Bear of you lot are just there, just kicking back, just watching and whatever it may be. Subscribe on any means that you are listening or watching. It goes a long way. Like seriously, it goes a long way. Honorable shout out to the subscribers that we've got already. But yeah, this year I'm amping that all the way up to bits. Love, guidance and everything. Taser's on the couch today. What yeah. well, my brother? <laughs> yeah? You saying you're good? Yeah, Bye. man. I'm back again, man. Back again, my bro. Like he didn't even leave. <laughs> like man was in the like man's that like, you're doing your pod upstairs. <laughs> it's like that. Local man. I, I love, love it here, man. I love it here. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. I've come from recording another pod. Mad. Yeah, got my nails done and all sorts. Look, the mad you, shiny, bro. What did you? Oh, did you do it on their pod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. is that um, what's their names again? Uh, Patricia's. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's come from there. I not Patricia, Priscilla. Sorry, Priscilla, yeah, Priscilla Wumi, yeah. and Shay. Hey, I love Priscilla. Vibes, I love Priscilla. Man. I just think her energy and aura is incredible. Yeah, they're good vibes, man. It's a good episode still. Is it, yeah? Mm. Honourable shots. And what they did your nails while you was doing Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they gave me the little, the man treatment. But then I said, I had a little gloss, man. I don't Let mind. Let me see your thing. Little, little shine. Makes yeah, you look yeah, clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I don't usually go for that too much. Yeah, I thought we'd go for it today because, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Is man. Is that the first time you've had a manicure? No, 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 no. This is the first time I've got the coat. Okay. The clear coat. Okay. I've, yeah, see, I've never done the... I get manicures and that, but I never usually get the clear coat. Nah, it, it wears off after a while, but for the first, like, day, it just looks mad clean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks hella shiny. Yeah. It looks hella shiny. Uh, honourable shout out to them. Yeah, Do you have them. a flipping Instagram burner account? No. Nah. But if I want to pre... If I've been blocked by someone, I want to pre, I'll go, go on my um, business page. 
whether it's the R and B. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Faded. So it just pops up when they go through their thing to see it. Say faded. Yeah, yeah, yeah that mean. But I don't have a no. Nah, I pre your chest, man. Yeah, strong. <laughs> yeah, strong. So do I. But fucking what? Have you been blocked by someone like that? Yeah, but I've been blocked bare times. Swear, bare times. Just some people just don't want to see my story. Like I post a lot. Innit? I just want to see your story. But why would they block you? Why would they? Yeah, no, yeah, they, they're upset with me. I don't, I don't want to see you. Oh, uh, yeah, I hear that still. There's a difference between being upset and then just letting them just exist. Yeah. Nah, I need to block you. I hear that. I'm a serial muter. Oh, mute? Yeah, I just mute, man. Do you know what I've done? I'll be honest with you. There's times where, like, I've caught myself looking at the girl, the girl's thing so much, yeah, and so quick. Like, it, you know, it just, it just works out that every time I go and see it, it's two minutes up. I still don't even have that much followers. And I've done it like 16 times. I'm like, you know what? I'm muting her for a week. <laughs> She's going to be because, freaking around. What, this guy's ego, boy. Yeah, man. Every, and, like, up, she posts something straight away. It's me. No, but Instagram does this thing here yeah, where like, for example, I don't know if it's, it's a bug and they fixed it here, yeah, but someone will upload and it will come up on your page. And if you don't like it and you refresh, it will still come up. Yeah, yeah. That's so it's I mean. like, I have to like it for it to go away. Oh, yeah, yeah, I hear that. No, man, I didn't want to like in the first place. Like, just go yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes that happens as well. I'm not pre though. You just keep coming up first every time I refresh. Yeah, I, I'm a serial muter, but, like, I pre with chest. I'm I'm good with that. I don't care. I, you know, you're going to see me. When I come, when I appear, you're going to see me. I got another Instagram, though. But the other Instagram that I've got is, like, actually just so that I'm, like, sometimes I just need to be away from all of the noise. So on this account, I just follow um, architecture, homes, um, art, and then quotes. Mm. So like the art, the homes is like more of a symbol of like the, my aspirations of the type of houses that I would like to get. So I just like looking at them. Then the interior is also the same type of thing. Like, mm. uh, like I'm like looking at all of these nice interiors that I can't afford forward yet but one day hopefully I can have an interior like that and then also the art is like the art that I would like to have in my yard or that I can still have in my yard now because I do like to buy some art and then like the quotes is just like stimulate my brain a bit you get what I'm saying and whatnot but and in that way see when I see when I go into that account bro I swear to you yeah it it feels like it's like going into a rave like coming out of a rave and then going into a bar where there's no one really there, but it's just a bit of quiet and it's just a space that you just need to just have a little, or just even just going in your yard. It feels so weird. Like when I'm there, I feel like I'm on my own. Mm. When I go into my actual Instagram, I, I can feel the difference even in my heart rate, which is mad, yeah? <laughs> Bro, I'll be in my normal Instagram and everything's just normal. I don't feel enough. I'm just in my normal Instagram, yeah? Then I go into my other Instagram and it feels like super peaceful and I'm just like, it's just mad peaceful. Then I come back into my thing again and I realise, oh shit, my heart rate has raised and all of these type of things. And what, but I'm back in the noise again. Mm. It's weird, bro. That's mad. That, that, that's, that's the impact social media is having on us, where The consistent need to get a notification. I uh, know. Well, do you have your notifications off though? I have it off, but I can see them. So I don't get notifications on Instagram. They're off. But if I go in the app, I can see that I've got oh, a new yeah, message yeah. or whatever. But I've got this thing where I've got to clear all my DMs. Even if I don't reply, I've got to read it or get it out of the way. Do you know what? I, I need to actually get it. rid of all my DMs, actually. I can't just leave it there. I've got to at least acknowledge it. Even if I don't reply, I've got to get rid of that red. What about in the um, other section of the Same. I've got to just look at it, then remove. And you remove them? Yeah, they're there, but I don't look. I don't want the notification. So it will say request. I know there's a request there, but the new notification, I've got to get rid of it. So I'll look at it, I'll open it, and then I'll come out of it. Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I don't reply oh, like to you won't, like, not, like, There's a difference, and it's not deleting, it's just Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, oh, okay. if, if, if the person's being rude, delete. I ain't got time for that. I get, I get those every so often. But it's just attention-seeking. So wait, is there never a time here where you're, like, having a conversation with someone that you're not even really, like, you're not even interested, but you're just bored a little bit or whatnot and then it's like you get to a point in the conversation where it's like it's dead now I just don't I can't even bother just don't reply. Do you op- but you open it yeah still. I'll swear yeah open it I just don't reply I just don't even open it 
<laughs> no, it's not to the opening because I want to see what you have to say. Like, what is it you're saying? Is this going to revive the convo? If it don't, I'll double back when I double back, man. I hear that. I hear that. That's strong, though. Can't yeah, respect man, that. Like, just double back when I double back. It's my phone. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, let me handle my phone how I handle my phone. Right, then. Those that want to complain, you're free to complain once. I'll address you. And then what happens the second time? Done. If you complain again, then take it to HR. Serious? Bro, I've told you that this is not how I... The way you expect me to use my phone is not how I use my phone. Right. So let's not do that. Like, my mum tried to do it one time. She messaged me. She was like, there's blue tick. I said, what does that mean? She goes, that means you've read it. I said, no, it doesn't. It means the phone is telling you I've read it. Right. <laughs> I ain't read it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Please, yeah. mum, let's not argue. Don't do that again. <laughs> she ain't done it again. But my thing is, though, anyway, like, I'll just hit, like... Maybe my outlook is not the norm, but if you don't hit me back, then it's cool. You just haven't hit me back, innit? I've just read the, I just read the room in that sense. But like, I'm never telling somebody, yo, what the fuck? Like, yo, you're leaving me unread. Yo, what's going on? I can't do that. I don't have that in me. I don't have it in me to, you've seen it. If I need to get in touch with you and it's important, then I'll just message again. Or I'll but, call you. Or I'll call, right. But I'm never pulling somebody up because like they didn't read my. Yeah, I even can't when, do that. Even man. when I see them, yeah, exactly. Like, there's no animosity because you aired my last message. But if it's a thing where they hit you, this this is what I don't like. So the person knows that they didn't read your last message, but then they'll do something like, "Oh, it's been a long time since you checked me, man. Like, brother, I messaged you the other day. Yeah. Oh, you know, obviously things have been happening. Yeah. But yeah, hit me back, nah. Yeah. yeah I'll yeah. wait for you to hit me. Right. <laughs> I'm not hitting you back unless it's hitting important. You back. I'm not hitting you back unless it's important. These times you've to my face, you've acknowledged that you saw my message, but you didn't reply. Mm. Now you're telling me to hit you. Nah, I'm alright. You just also, you know what? Sometimes you just have to just hit him with the emoji as well. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> hit you with a big thing, yo. Yeah, hit him. <laughs> hey, Wait, I can't it's do even that worse. As an emoji, though. It's even worse. Yeah, it's on WhatsApp now. Where you can just res- like you can click on the message and you can do the little one. That's the mad one. Look at my thing now. Look at my profile picture now. What on what Instagram? No, what's, what's that? Uh, what's that? That's my mood. That one there. Oh shit! Put that on the screen. <laughs> that oh, is shit. my mood. <laughs> That's the best one, on brother. Yeah, I'm in a crowd. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear yeah. you, my brother. Put it on, put it on the screen. Cool story, bro. Cool story. <laughs> I'm know? good, love. Enjoy. That's what that one is. I put a young sc- uh, <laughs> um, screen protector, but a privacy one recently. Just be making sure that shit works. Cause you know what? Sometimes, man, when I'm on public transport or whatever, I see people just looking at my fucking phone and that, man. It's getting on my nerves. I can't stand it. Or even when I got a... L- do you know what? They should do them for the laptop as well, quickly. I'm sort of trying to do edit something on my laptop or whatever, and the person sitting next to me or just watching my thing. Huh? They should have them. They got them for a phone. They definitely got them for the laptop. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, what was I gonna mention before I even get into anything proper, proper, proper? Um. Uh. La, 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 la. Oh, my mum's funny, by the way. I swear, my mum is funny. By the way. My mum, yeah. She. Is like she's leaving her job, or she's wanting to leave her job. Yeah. She's got a new job. Now, she's, she you know she's working, the, the irony. She's gonna be working at uh, funeral services. That's her, gonna be her thing, yeah? Now, she's gonna be great at it. She's gonna be so good at it. It's actually all, this is, it's like, this is her thing. Yeah, she's been destined to do this, yeah? But now it's like, yo, she's been offered this job and that, yeah? And she's just stalling to take the fucking job. I'm like, mum. Hand in your notice. <laughs> Why are you not handing in your notice? Every minute is an excuse. Ah, oh, but I gotta do this and that. And I said, you gotta be careful, you know, like doing all of this stalling and that. They just take the job away from you, you know. <laughs> this is a job as well that is gonna be so easy for you. It's not even like you're leaving one like a, a job that is tough to go into a next job that is gonna be difficult. Like leaving a tough job to go and do something that is easier, you should be running towards mm. that, brethren. Do you understand what I'm saying? I told her today, I said, Mum, when do you want to start this job? August. I don't this year. <laughs> I said, I said like, when do you want to start? Is that when you want to start it? They want her to start tomorrow. <laughs> but she can't start tomorrow because, you know, in like in the employment thing, you've got to hand in your notice. You've got to mm. give them four weeks or whatever. Some places it's all three months and shit. But like, 
she's got to give four weeks or whatever. But like, she's complaining, she's thinking, I don't know if I can, like, she's just bare excuses after bare excuse. I said, mum, when do you want to start this job? When do you want to start it? Mm -hmm. August, you want to start it then? By then, it's not going to be there anymore. So it is. They don't like change, man. I've noticed Trust that. Trust me. It's taking time for me to kind of adjust and understand. They just don't like change. So in the midst of all the excuses and all of that stuff, all the, the base of it is, I don't want to change. Mm. I'm used to my routine. That's literally what it is. Even my, like my mum now, I'm trying to get her to like move out of London. I'm uh, telling her like the, what? the rat race is long. Like, I'm saying it's long and I'm the one that's still out there running around. Mm. You ain't even running. I can't remember the last time you went to Tesco's to do the food shop. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You're so used to convenience. It's all coming to you now. And then I'm telling you just pick up and just move to a different location. You're telling me, nah, I'm, I'm used to this. I'm not, that doesn't make any sense yeah, to me. Yeah, because you know what it is though? It's the, it's for them, they got to change meat shop. No, no, I hear that. You get what I'm saying? I they hear that. Change the Ross Clark hairdressers, hairdressers, <laughs> the, the off license. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? Know, like, all of that is all part of the community, and it, they, obviously they have that sense of community. They've been there for so long. You you hear them stories of like fifty. I remember fifty was talking about this. Where he's saying, right, like I was trying to get my granny out of the, the hood and that she, she was be. not on it. Yeah, big millions. My man's got you know ready to just. Put Granny in a nineteen-bedroom yard. Obviously, Granny is too big for Granny and that. Anyway, but still, move her into. Oh, good. Put her in a nice little bungalow. Nah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's Fink. Good. Fink just bought his mum a house the other day. Who? The Rock. Think what? about how long the Rock's been going for. He just bought his mum the house the other day. Oh, what? what? He only just managed to persuade her now. Or is yeah. He, he just said, "Yo, this is the crib. Come on, man. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's get it, mum. Like, Messi's grandma's still in the. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that the other day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because people, cause people were, um, when he won the World Cup, people went back to his mum's, his nan's yard. Oh, shit. And obviously, because she's still local, big, p- listen, imagine you winning a global award. I know, I know. Where your mum lives right now, bare people, just outside, because they're like, oh, I swear Chucky lives here. He says, oh, been, shit. <laughs> he says, you ain't been there for like 10, 20 years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're just yeah, outside yeah. your yard. And it's all love, but it's just, it, that's headache, man. Do you know what? Uh, this is going to sound outrageous. But if I'm super racks, like if I'm M's up and I know, and, and Mumsy's yard is at risk because obviously I'm just, it's lit, I'm outside, it's mad, I'm thing, whatever. And I'm saying to Mumsy, listen, mum, I need you out. Like we need to go. I need you to live like, or pick a place. And she's not on it. You see one day when she goes to the meat shop, I'm going to pack everything up out of the house and I'm going to arson up the place. <laughs> I'm, I'm burning it down to bits. And then you know what? You're going to have to move. You're going to have to move now. But you know what? I've got the pictures. <laughs> I've got the documents. I've got the bed sheets. I've got everything that you need. I'll take the fruit, the food, everything, yeah. But everything in the house are outside of that that is not sentimental. I'll take the plates. I'll take everything. But I'm gonna arson up the place and just safely, so that obviously no one don't get hurt at that. And then, then, then. No, but I, I see that's the issue I have with my mum. We can't be taking old stuff to a new yard. <laughs> We're in a new builder. You're bringing out plates with designs. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> No man, don't play. Don't play some designs. Only work when yeah. you know, like, yeah. the sofa's got like the little plastic piece yeah. on it. We got the old rug that your nan's got. Like, <laughs> them plates only work in them kind of yards, bro. In the new build, it's gonna look out of place. Even thing, my mom had to adjust. Yeah, so we had some madness in the kitchen, so they gave us the new modern kitchen. Right. Mom tried to bring out the old Dutch pot. Don't <laughs> yeah. work on the new stove. Oh, it doesn't work on that. You gotta get the heat induction. Oh, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, Mom's yeah, looking, what's heat induction? I was like, Mom, move with the times. I'm like, Bob, you see that pot there? As soon as you put it on the stove, put your hand in it, water's hot. Right. You you got us waiting five minutes. Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> for the you stove got boil, you gotta boil the kettle first <laughs> you see what I'm saying <laughs> then boil it. But like come on still. man Let's but the Dutch it. pot has got co- you see when you look at the Dutch pot though culture yeah 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 but then you gotta do everything you gotta sometimes do- you can't sometimes there's beauty in culture and like what I mean by that is <laughs> I was ha- having this conversation with someone just the other day yeah. you see the nose that certain cultured gal have <laughs> you know that bit? 
You know that that bit that <laughs> you know certain girl have that big bit there. Wait, where are you going with this though? <laughs> but like, there's beauty in that because there's culture. Like you can't always just get rid of everything. Yeah, so that's yeah, not what I'm saying. Him. Like sometimes there's beauty in the nose, and there's beauty in the Dutch pot. But there's some beauty in things that I, I I couldn't tell you why. Like the collarbone. Like the what? The, the collarbone. Color. When a girl has an exposed collarbone, <laughs> yo. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is here, but even ankles. You see when girls wear yoga pants and ankles out. Oh my god, rage. What's I'm loving thing? it. With the bling. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, the bling, mm, but I'm talking about it has to be gym pants and the ankles out. Whatever trainers they're wearing, cool, obviously, ideally clean trainers, but it's just the little ankle out. Hey, Chucky, I'm in love, you oh, know? Oh, my God. I don't know what it is. Bro, do you know I had in my notes? I didn't even know how we was going to talk about it and what we was going to talk about. And I was going to bring it up later after because we're definitely going to talk about the R&B thing today. But um, sex appeal. <laughs> yeah, Big man. That's a good one. Sex appeal. Like... There's so many different, like, you know what? We were like, sometimes you can see sex appeal in so many different and interesting ways. I went to, um, I've been going to Flippers a lot, which is the um, roller skating place there that's owned by Usher and Jimmy Iovine, yeah? It's in White City, it's cold. Um, bro, sometimes you go in there and you see a couple of girls in there or women in there with sex appeal to bits in the way that they skate. Yeah, I can imagine. The confidence, the smoothness. Like, I wouldn't, like there's some, some respectfully, there's like probably some girls in there that I wouldn't maybe even look at like that on the roadside, if I'm just out on the roadside and that. Fling on a quads. <laughs> Fling on some quads and skate backwards. What? Oh my God, my brother. <laughs> Sex appeal to bits. <laughs> that's like, that's like that's, I guess that's the same appeal for like dancing. Right. Like when you look at someone that can really dance, that is like, Chucky, I know you've done it before, bro. Go on. You've seen a girl filming her bridging. And for some reason, as soon as the camera's on them, they've got to do that pose yeah, where they've yeah, got to yeah, twerk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you looking at the twerking like, wait, do you think you're twerking? Yeah, I know. It's, do you know what I'm saying? That, uh, Im- immediately, lost composure. Yeah, straight. I'm looking at you in the bedroom thinking, nah, it's, yeah, it's, it's dead, the thing it's dead, and it's literally 10 seconds, the, the brethren just put the camera on them, they thought, right, I need to do something. They lost all their sex appeal. They grabbed the knees, they bent over, and it's just... Mm. Yeah, they grabbed the knees. I <laughs> <laughs> There's always that one. They, yeah. they bent, oh, it's like, come on. Like, Do you think girls have the same for men then? What, when it comes to sex appeal? I heard this um, when we reversed the car. Oh, they like that? What? If you turn around and grab her headrest... Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's wet. Oh really? Brain. Damping the panty. Obviously, obviously, you have to re- be able to reverse the car. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm mean with the reverse parking. Or you say it's smooth. Oh, bro, you should have seen the way that I reversed the whip yesterday in the fucking <laughs> tight spot. If I had a gal, if that's the case, and I had a gal in my car, damp, moist in the brief. It's a bit. My, bro, I'm not. Like, bro, it was the tightest spot, and I did it in a couple of smooth. Ying. It was like a. It was a ying. No, but it had to be a little light. I couldn't, yeah, it was like, woom, 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 woom. Yeah, yeah, but just, you know, like when you, and then you go, ying, and then, boom, and then bam, knee. You can't believe I'm getting in that They love that, I can't lie to you, they love that one still. Obviously, we don't look back no more because we've got modern day cars and that. Yeah, true. The screen's just there, but they do like when you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I hear excuse that. Excuse one that. second, babe, one second. Oh, my God. I don't know, I don't know. Oh yeah, it would be interesting to find. I mean, I don't know. You can leave it in the comments, innit? But yeah, for me, there's like so many different. I even like maybe this is a little bit, maybe this is a little bit different as well. But it's like I always find that that question of what is your type interesting to me, because I I I honestly genuinely do not have a type. I have got certain things I don't like. But I'll tell you that. But I don't have a type. There's so many different. For me, there's so many different things about a woman that I can find attractive. Just so many different Man, things. You're right. And and you see like all of these different things, it's like, let's just say there's a hundred of those things. Yeah. There's not gonna be a woman that's gonna have all one hundred, but she might have a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of this. That's enough. She or I might meet another girl who has none of those things, but they have a bit of that, a bit of this and a bit of that. That's enough. Or they might have, do you understand what I'm saying? There's so many different things. It's so difficult for me to just say, oh, you know what, like, her hair colour's got to be this colour. 
Do you know she's what? She's got to be fucking. What's the game changer? What's the game? As thing? in the one that makes I, the one, bro. But there's any, there's any type of girl can be a, not any type of girl, but like she can. One girl that I tell you is a game changer. I could show you another girl that is a, a game changer, and she looks completely different. Another thing on top of that as well, yeah, the, the icing on the cake for me here yeah, is. Let's say there's ten women that you're describing, all of them are gonna showcase whatever they have differently because it's you. Yeah, and yeah. the same, and, and in the same vein, it would be different to me. Yeah, yeah. So when you know that, okay, this this is her in a sitting in a femininity, should I say? Yeah. Because you've allowed her to, or right. you're sitting so boastfully in your masculine, you can see that as well. Because yeah, yeah. there's some girls that I know that speaking to other guys, and they don't get the same girl that I get. Right, it's the same girl. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my god, it's the same girl. Oh my god, you know what I'm saying. That. I but that. I know I'm so sure of myself that right. when she's around me, yeah, the version she's giving me, I like. Yes, but the version you're getting, you don't like. All of a sudden, she's a problem. Well, that's your business, big yeah, man. Exactly. That's not to do with me. But well, it's, that, it's like, but it's like when a well. girl says, "Oh yeah, that nah, bro, she's just hella rude. Like she's just hella rude. She's face, she's got attitude and that." You go and meet the girl in that, and she's just as so sweet yeah, as cool. anything. And you're like, "What? I'm big man." I <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let me tell you something. Matt, you could tell me as well, oh, you know what, like, she's a bit she's a bit stiff, she's a bit thing, whatever it is, yeah. After she spent X amount of time with me, I see the goofy side. Why? Comfortability. Bro. Yeah, man. She's just there beat, acting like a real goof and I love it and I endorse it. And, I, and you know what? I amp it up. Do you get what I'm saying? I'll be your hype, man. <laughs> we'll just be in a room, just being stupid together. Let's do that. Jackie's got these words. If you like it, I love if it. If you like it, I love it. <laughs> right then. Yeah? Obviously, within context. Yeah, within reason. Yeah, there's certain true. things that, like, I'm just, I'm not really, it's not really my thing. But, yeah, man, there's, like, certain things that I don't like. A lot of stuff that I do that draws me to a woman is, like, characteristics. And those characteristics as well kind of lean into sex appeal and that too, sometimes. Sex appeal is a bit, of a, it can be a bit of an oxymoron in some senses though, because someone having sex appeal or just having sex appeal could lean to just having all of the wrong attention. And it could also mean that it's not like, someone could not have much about them, but still have sex appeal. Whereas like, sometimes you can actually meet somebody who doesn't have much sex appeal, but they still have a lot about them and they're still nice, they're still cute, they're still whatever it may be, but they just don't have the sex Yeah, there was, there was, these, there was these two girls that I knew from, I'm not going to say the uni in case anyone realises who they are, but they went to a particular uni. My boy went there. So every time I went to go check him, I used to see these girls around or whatever. Mm. And then one of them, so there's two, both from the same country, both look fairly different, but one had so much sex appeal, but the other one was actually nicer than that. Right. So if you look, you'd go for girl two. Mm. But sex appeal wise, that stuff that gets your blood flowing Girl A had loads of it. Loads of it, right. But she didn't realise. She didn't know. She didn't get it. I'm all saying it to the man. They're like, I don't know what you're saying. Only one of my boys understood. They're like, yeah, I hear you, but wait till you see her more. Because he goes to the uni, he's like, over time it wears off. But Because mm. this is my first time meeting them. I'm like, nah, it's girl A's sex appeal is crazy. Just the way she carries herself, the way she looks at you sometimes. You're like, yo. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to... Yeah, yeah. You want to step out now? You know what I'm saying? But it was the other one. She's actually sexier. Right. The other one... More fun, more, but the sex appeal just wasn't there as much as girl A. Yeah. There was a very big distinctive difference. It's like she just knew how to work the room when it came to men. You know, there's just some girls that just know how to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. They just make you feel like you're, they're the only, you're the only person they're talking to. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, let me not get sucked in. Man. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> hey. but sometimes as well, you know what, like se that sex appeal, like sex appeal can only do so much. It's supposed to be like the icing on the cake. and But if you don't have, not the icing on the cake, sex appeal can almost be like the cherry on top. Because like, again, having sex appeal is good, isn't it? And I, I'd love to be with a woman who had like some sex appeal or whatever. But like, if she didn't have the sex appeal, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But I do think that sometimes someone can have sex appeal and you just kind of, it just only does so much for me. For me, it just only does so much. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take someone seriously that that step further just because they got sex appeal. They got sex appeal. Yeah. Like, for me, part of me will, will keep telling myself, "Bruv, you know what this is. Don't get too invested. 
don't fall heads over here. You know, that there's mm. part of me will keep telling myself that because this is the girl that has sex appeal. Mm. Unless she can show me a different side to her or some, I don't know, but I just find going into that, me going into those kind of situations, it doesn't end well. Yeah, yeah. Also, do you know what as well, going back to what I was saying about like, there's just, for me, I can just more name things that I don't like than to go through all of the things that I do like because there's a million things that I like about women or that I could like about women. Well, then there's a million things that I can like about human beings. But there's just certain things that I'm not like, I can't, I just, I guess they're almost like non-negotiables. You get what I'm saying? If I met somebody who was hella rude and arrogant, ar- arrogant, sorry, I couldn't, I just couldn't even do it. Also like, do you know what? I'll be honest with you as well. Um, I find, I find people that eat really bad, unattractive as well. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Now I wouldn't. I don't know if it's a non-negotiable because I'm still trying to work that out. Wait, I saying? think that as I think that this you have to add context with this. If you eat really bad, what is your what's your weight like? Now look, let me be clear when I say this. Yeah, I can be with somebody who looks unhealthy by the society standards because the way that somebody looks doesn't necessarily mean that they eat that doesn't mean that they eat bad mm. you know what I mean they could it could be genetics it could be a whole bunch of other things it could be you know things that women just go through that black puts on the weight or whatever it may be but you know what they still eat very good do so you know what I'm saying like and it's just their interior is good and that's the most important thing and you can also meet somebody who is super skinny super slim and that but they eat terribly and their interior is super shit but <laughs> I guess if you do, if I had to choose between the two, if there was a, a a problem with weight, if there was a problem with weight, adding to the fact that you eat terribly bad, then it, then I don't know if I could do it because I I feel like I know what that comes with. When you say eat terribly bad, yeah, can can you expand on that as well? Because no, 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 because eat terribly bad could be bad food. But then people that are eating one meal a day still eat bad as well. Yeah, I mean, that still affects your... You know, by the way, sometimes you could not... You could eat super light stuff and then still put on weight. Because you're, you're eating the right things. Yeah, and also your body goes into starvation mode. Exactly. And then it starts know. all eating itself and shit. It doesn't know when you're going to eat again. So what it does is whenever you eat, it holds it. Because it's like... That's why those that go gym will tell you eating more makes sense. Because then what happens is your body goes into this mode right. of just taking what it needs because it knows you're going to eat again. So I don't yeah. need to take, for example, all of the protein and carbs from this meal because he's only going to eat again in another two hours. Yeah. So let me just take what I need for this session or whatever. Yeah. Your body gets into that kind of mode. Obviously, this is me speaking in like layman, um, what's the, what do they call it? Bro science. But yeah. essentially, that's what your body's doing. When you do the opposite where, okay, because I want to lose weight, I'm just going to starve myself. Your body's thinking, hold on, I don't know when the next meal's coming. So this meal, I'm holding on to it. Right. You're not losing no weight. Or you are, but it's not in a healthy manner. Well, bro, look, meeting a woman and she only eats lettuce and a couple of things and just eats one time a day, that's unattractive to me. (laughs) I'll be honest with you, that's unattractive. They roasted all the cabbage. All you had for like, all you had all day to eat is quinoa. And I, I, like, come on, man. <laughs> like, that's childish. Like, I get it, because, like, but, look, okay, I see what some of you lot are saying. If you have, like, you know, a problem, there's something that's deep-rooted or whatever. Oh, no, I'm not, too, I'm, I'm not talking I'm not about, about that. that. I'm talking about this, just right. not organising your time. Yes, exactly. So you're, so you're that's wa- what it is. Yeah, so you're waking up at 7 a.m., allegedly, to get ready to get to work at 8.30. You haven't managed to get breakfast in because cause of the whole rat race. Cool. Yeah, that's calm. Then you get to work, you bang out a four hour shift, it's lunchtime. You're telling me you don't go to lunch because, or you do go to lunch, but you just grab a quick jacket potato and uh, do you know what I mean? So that's it. So it's now, so four hours again, end of work. So let's say 6 p.m., you've right. eaten once or twice light meals. And then now we're going out to dinner later on now, you don't want to eat food. Oh, I don't and mean, all you ate. All... I, yeah, I ain't got appetite. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, you oh. just had one falafel in the day. But then, then she's like to you, so what did you do today? Oh, I've, I've slept five meals already. Was gone that? Gym. I've, I've hit five oh, meals already. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, gone yeah. gym, yeah. had a nap. Like, <laughs> But then flip it on the other side, it's like, oh yeah, 
Bomb. Woke up in the morning. Cake. <laughs> then, okay. Cake, but all right. Because sometimes. Last what Chinese. They, huh? like, last yeah, last night's <laughs> Chinese. I'm going to be honest with you. That shit is hella unattractive <laughs> to me. I don't mind that on a Sunday morning after a heavy Saturday night. Yeah? But you see on Tuesday. <laughs> You see on Tuesday? Yeah, last no, night was, last we're not, night we're not doing that. We're not doing that. That is, I hate, no. So then you did that now, right? So anyway now, boom. Last night's <laughs> Chinese, Tuesday know. morning now. Gone work. Cake. Sam's. Yeah, <laughs> she's got Sam's, had cake. Then, all right, boom, like she might have all had, um, you know, a packet of pineapples from... And um, Tesco's or Finger whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. cool, quick, boom quick now. Pack, yeah, a quick pack, yeah, a young snack, whatnot. A granola bar, something. Yeah, granola bar, whatnot. Then come home now, going through the phone, it's delivery and it's Indian. I'm like, you know what? I, I can't, on a Tuesday. That's what it is. Yeah, just... nah, I just, it's, it's things like that. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And I think maybe, a, maybe is a part of that. Do I see it like that? Because... I think one day, if we were to have children, like, I I can cook, by the way. So this is not coming from a place of uh, me telling someone that they need to be able to whip it up or whatever. Guess what, love? I know my way around the kitchen, mm. yeah? And if I need to, if I need to go in there, I can whip it and do my thing, yeah? And I will do that, and I enjoy doing that, actually, yeah? But I do feel like sometimes when I meet someone, I do, I am thinking about what would it look like if we had children together? Like, what would it look like? Let's just say, even in, in an accident, like, well, like, just an accident happened, what would that look like? What, is this just that, like, yesterday's Chinese and that from, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, is that what's happening on a regular basis and that? No, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I could do that. And people can change because you can also meet someone that eats really well and whatever and then later on down the line they can change. But I've, I'll have to cross that bridge when it comes. Yeah, but that's like anything in life. The same way exactly. the person who's eating poor when you meet them, something might happen to them. Or, yeah, something, might happen, or something might happen to someone else and then it influences their decision making and all of a sudden they start eating healthy. But one thing I will say is now that I've kind of been going gym and eating, da, 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 anybody around me who's like, oh, I'm going to stop drinking, I'm going to stop eating bad. and da, da, da. I'm like, listen, don't do that. Give yourself two weeks. Finish 14 days. Then give yourself another two weeks before you know it, a month has gone by. That's 30 days. Was it okay? Did you do it well? Cool. Then extend it. Don't say, for example, everyone who's doing New Year's resolutions, resolution that they're oh, going to no, think no. they're going to end for the whole year. Nah, just start for Jan, get through Jan. Did you do it successfully? Cool. Then do March, then Feb, sorry, then do March. And then before you know it, the year's gone. Mm. But then people that say from the beginning of the year, I'm going to do it to the end of the year. What? When that cold turkey phase hits you. Just nuts. You just start binge. You just start. Listen, You're I've done it mad. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm guilty of. I've yeah. been guilty of that. Where I've like, I've overdone it and I've binge. Do you know what? Actually, thinking of that, do you know what I find hella sexy? When a when a woman says, "Um, I'm gonna do a detox for a week." Oh, I love that. That's I love <laughs> that. But when you ask them why, and they say, "Oh, I was reading about," oh my god. <laughs> I just think that I was reading about, or like I, I, I read, and I and and then they hit me with the the info. Oh my god, I find that shit so sexy. <laughs> I find it so sexy, like not just oh I'm just gonna do it because you're just gonna do it, but like no, you came back with the info and whatever. These times now I'm not even listening to the, to the info anymore. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I just I find think I could never be with somebody that's homophobic. By the way, I couldn't, man. What kind of segue was that? I know, I just thought about it in my head. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, we're, we're from detox to homophobic? Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, but why, why? I don't know, I don't know. I couldn't, I don't, I don't think the I could hate, be... Man. The hate in your heart, man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I could be with a woman who, like, had... You know, it's funny. Sometimes you can tell the type of person you don't want through some of the friends that you have. Mm. What, because some of your friends make comments and you're like, mm. Yeah, I'm like, rah, like, I could, you could, like, respectfully, obviously you're my brethren anyway, but, like, if my girl ever said that, or I was meeting a girl, if I was meeting a girl and she had said that, 
that would just put me right off. Yeah, it's it's a weird one still. But yeah, I don't know. It's, I guess it's like we're all, we are all ignorant to so many things, but I think it's about how you approach that ignorance. And, and I think that that's where attraction lies to me sometimes as well. When people approach ignorance from a place of understanding, not knowing, or or like maybe being a little bit open-minded or whatever it is, I like that. But when it's from a place of like, there's ignorance, you might not even know too much about it, or you do, but it's coming from a place of animosity. I don't know. I just, I think that feeds into more of like, me just making sure that my surroundings are always peaceful. And mm. if I've got somebody around me that is like, has these mad opinions with so much vim as well, on top of that too, I know I'm just adding bits to it. It's, that's not for me. And then I'd see a lot of it, to be fair. No, I hear you, I hear you. It, it takes a lot, it, like I say all the time, it takes a lot to get to know someone. And these people that think they can just do it overnight, just for the sake of being in a relationship, I'm like, all right, cool, good luck to you, man. But for me, there's, there's things, like, like you said, there's moments where I could be seeing a girl for what, a year? Before a situation yeah, arises true. itself. And if she does something, has a homophobic moment, and I'm like, whoa. Nah, man. Like, whole future's in, in, in however the saying goes, it's done. No, Jeopardy, but it's done. I, I can't see past that. Yeah. Now, I'm, the, the, I'm not going to unpack why you feel that way right. to change my mind. The fact is, I've been seeing you for a year and I didn't see it coming. I'm hurt myself. I'm right, I didn't see this coming. I got a phone to Amanda and be like, bro, yeah, she's not the one, you know. Why? Ah, oh. da 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 so I'm saying because some some people make comments that you know, but this ain't changing overnight. Mm. You are stuck in your ways, but you don't see it coming because all what we were doing we were just playing about linking, going out, eating. We never really had needed to have those conversations, and a lot of people cut through their relationships five, six years in. They haven't had that conversation. I'm like, that that is mad to me. Mm. That is mad to me. I think like you know what, someone can have a moment where they say something, yeah. And that, that thing, again, it goes to what I was saying about how they approach certain things. So it's like, if someone says, oh, do you know what? Like, I find that difficult to understand it. I don't really, I don't really, I don't really understand it. I think that's okay. But I think it's like, and then you can have a conversation about it. They still might not understand it, but they're not going to treat anyone any different. It's just, I, I, maybe I'm not supposed to understand it. Maybe it's because it's not for me. I, I don't know. And I, I, I just... Not everyone can be empathetic to everything and everyone, yeah. But providing you're not treating them any different and it's not coming with too much mad fucking whatever source, I think it can be okay. But when it's coming from a place of, oh, fuck, like, like, fuck, I don't know, man. I just can't, that's not for me, man. That's not for me. And I've seen that happen. And I've been in them situations where it's happened. And I'm like, I'm at a stage now in my life where I'm not even... I don't even want to debate. I don't even want to have a debate about these stupid things about, for me, oh, you know, so what would you do if your child was gay? I'm not having a conversation about that. Are we yeah, really that having one, a conversation about that? That one bugs me, man. Oh, uh, so what would you do? I remember one time someone said to me, because um, we was having a car, I love this brother to bits, by the way, to bits. But yeah, we was having a conversation in the car one time and then he was like, asking me like putting me in these scenarios what would you do if what would you do if what would you do if and I'm like I don't really I don't have an answer for, I don't really I don't, it doesn't affect me it's not gonna happen and it doesn't affect me either and also it's not really affecting you it's like whatever this person decides to do is whatever they decide to do whatever it is yeah but then it's like well bro you're not standing for something but I'm like well I do stand for something but like bro, like so it's a hypothetical. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, but there's one hypothetical I saw on the internet. I said, yeah, if we can... See what Chucky said he wants to do to his yard to get Mumsy out? If we could do that to the internet, this is the moment we should do right. it. Yeah. Uh-huh. A man said... I, I don't want you to answer either. I'm just saying it for the listeners and then we can move on, yeah? A man said, imagine you wake up... He said it to a, a woman, by the way. Imagine you wake up and... Um, you know that um, music video? Little Dicky and Chris Brown, where they switch bodies. Mm-hmm. So he goes, imagine your man and your dad switched bodies your man yeah you so your 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 partner your husband your boyfriend whatever and your dad switched bodies but in order for them to switch back you have to fuck one 
I'm just flipping it. So, if, so your boyfriend. So do, let me just put like just to make it simple in my like to make it close to me. My missus and my mum switch, switch bodies. Yeah. As in your mum's consciousness is in yeah, your yeah. missus's body. So now if I chop my the body of, of your missus, missus it's your I'm mom chopping inside. my mum. Yeah. And vice versa. <laughs> but uh, both of them have to go. <laughs> Wait a minute. Both no. of them have to go. I got questions. I'm what? I've got a couple of questions. I, well, I'm not going to answer them. You can just throw it about So, there. you see the tone of voice? You see the tone of voice? <laughs> Does the tone of voice stay my missus? Like, it's her voice. It's her voice. It's my missus' voice. But it's your yeah, mom, but it's your mum inside. It's your mum's consciousness. It's the, do they both know what's happening there? Yes. Yes. Your mum is saying, um, Chucky, but it's your mum in your girlfriend's body. <laughs> and vice versa. And your girlfriend's in your mum's body. And the man's saying to you, you got to pick one to chop so they can flip back. I'm saying, big man, I'm they can stay the same. What? Why are you answering people, bro? I'm cutting out. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Which one? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I blatantly said you didn't have to answer the question, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum's body. Your mum's body or your mum's consciousness? No. Huh? Your mum's consciousness or your mum's body? My mum's consciousness. Oh, in your girl? I'm chopping my, my missus's body. body. No. Yeah. yeah. I'm chopping my missus's body. Yeah, but your mum's consciousness. Wait, your mum's consciousness. I'll just say shut up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I'm sorry, Chucky. Bro, I can't approve that message. <laughs> That's good. Hey. Hey. What? Right. No, but let me ask you this, yeah? If it was for the greater good. But There's I, three of you. What do you mean? The greater good for who? What? For, for humanity. humanity. But man ain't Superman, bro. No, but come on, this is hypothetical. What? If it's for the I greater can't... good of humanity. But the greater good has to go. But what do you mean? What's that? Human, state? everything. Yeah, everything has to go. Oh, yeah. So you has to go. Brad, what? Come on, man. Whoever thought of this is evil. You win. <laughs> <laughs> you win. <laughs> I am not willing to stoop this low, big man. You win. Uh, what? what? I'm t- cutting ties with both of them that day. What would you lot do? I'm asking you lot, gang. What would you lot do? Leave that in the comments. That'd be just funny. I think I know what Dan would do. I think he's with me. <laughs> nah, there's no way Dan has an answer for that. Dan's chopping his, his, his missus' his body. He's going to tell his mum to shut up as well. Nah. Poets just killing everyone. But you just have to kill everyone, man. Specs. He's chopping both. Yeah, Specs was probably chopping both of them <laughs> to, to tell the story, bro. Yeah, no, no, he would. He still would. Uh, I, know, I know what you're going to you know say, what? but he still a, would. The, uh? no, I, know, I know what he was going to say, but he still would. Um, that's funny, because uh, when I was at Antigone's house the other day, yeah, and they, they was playing was playing a card game, and on one of the cards it said, um, it said, um, if to get rid of, yeah, it said, to get rid of a crime... So a crime could never be committed right. again. You would have to commit that crime. What would it be? Yeah. Uh, it there was yeah. So it's, it's on a, it was on another podcast I went on as well. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, yeah and the brother said a mad thing, they, and they he got buried. What did he say? Couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. No, but no, but the thing is, yeah, it's, 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 hey, and bleep that word out as well. Yeah, but, but, but <laughs> remember what you said. It's a question that doesn't need answering. That there's some questions you no, just do don't you know need what? to I answer. I mean, look, but that was part of the game, and he answered it. But they still cooked him. He said, "But I'm playing the game." Yeah, no, I respect. But the thing is, I respect the answer though. Yeah, the certain, I respect the answer. I just couldn't do it. Yeah, there's certain crimes that literally, like when I hear about, it, I don't care who you are, you need to get buried underneath the jail. But yeah, for me I mean, to commit it. That's again me giving up myself for the greater good. So wait, so in it, so in it. Can I be honest with you? I'll be honest with you. Now, actually, I was gonna say something crazy. You're mental, Dan. Up there. By what? You're mental. No, no, not even that. I'm saying in 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 the in the in the history books. Go on. I'm known as the last person who did this crime. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nah. <laughs> 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 Like Man, crime, like yo, that crap up for run, dog. Like people, are you, you, or you born or whatever. Oh, like how comes we? What, so once upon a time there was, um, yeah, yeah, no, it's not not there anymore because Taser was the last one. I lied. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. 
Do you know what? <laughs> to be honest with you, if for the great, because that was another thing, was like for the greater good, hypothetically speaking, if it's for greater good or whatever, I'm gonna, to be honest with you, I'm just doing a stupid one. Like, like something like, I'm just, te- I'm going to teeth. I'm going to steal. You know what I'm saying? Or Because, yeah, I'm going to steal. I'm not killing anyone. I'm not, actually, could you, Possibly. No, but what would the crime be? That's the thing. What if I was gonna kill somebody? Yeah. So what would the crime How would be? I dump them? The, no, no. I so said, what would the crime be? The crime, the, the crime isn't murder. So you're saying murder? Yeah. Would I dump? We need stuff? murder, bro. Yeah. We do need it still. We need murder. Murder's not a good one. Why do we need murder? Not murder, but I need. We, 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 people need to die. Hello. Yeah, but murder is a different thing. But it depends on who you're murdering. Big man, you're not getting rid of. You're not getting. You're not getting rid of manslaughter. Yeah. You're just getting rid of murder. No, 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 no. But manslaughter is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about straight murder. There's what? some... So, what? Some people need to get licked off. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, some people need to get their heads licked off. Oh, that's still. If someone's out there willing to do it, I'm not going to say no. For the, great, <laughs> for the greater good. <coughs> Big man, do your thing. I hear that. <clears throat> it's, it's a hard one, man. It's a hard one. It's an interesting one still. Um... What was I going to say now? <clears throat> R&B thing's been doing all right, isn't it? Yeah, man. That's that, That's the event I look forward to nowadays, man. The R&B events that we've been doing have been doing... Honestly, I think, like, last year, those events that we did were, like, some of my, like, biggest highlights. Facts. I think ever. Yeah, facts. Like... Last year was so sick for it. And even the way that we started it this year... With the karaoke thing Strong. as well. It was crazy. It's uh, been like, go on. No, I was going to say, the karaoke has easily been my best event in the past two years. Yeah. Top, yeah. top three. So we've been like, me and Taze have been doing these um, R&B parties. Um, it actually officially started the first official one, really, which I know we're not really going to be counting it. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> we're not going to count it, but we are counting it still, though was um it was in October 2019 in Trent Park and you know what that seems like far away you know do you know why it does as well because the next one that we did was far after it it wasn't until 2019 or 2020 2021 yeah that's 2021 what was talking about fucking why did I say 2021 yeah 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 yeah. it was 2021 and then like the next one wasn't until February the next year yeah but um that one, if I'm being honest with you, I don't know about you yet, but leading up to that event, I wasn't fast. Yeah, it was. It felt I, what the first one. That like leading up to it, I wasn't. Oh uh, yeah, because um, obviously I've been speaking. I was speaking to Matthew pretty much every day, and it's just like people are complaining that it's Trent Park. Um, we done a guest list, just invited all of the girls that we knew, just come down and enjoy this new um, concept that me and Chucky are working on. So because of that, there was a bit like. And your throwing names on guest list is like women and Ari, but this is the beauty of it. Cause now, if I message the girl and said oh, I'm putting your guest list, she's what? <laughs> what? Oh my god! She's telling me, forget about it. I'm gonna buy my ticket. That mm. like, is that is that much in demand? I can't even risk just being on guest list. Mm. I'm gonna buy my ticket because I need to be in there. Mm-hmm. It's got to that stage now, so I don't really mind. It's just a. It's a beautiful thing, though. but yeah, go on. When I walked, it was only until I walked in, it was the so like obviously we knew it was doing it, was doing whatever it was, was doing whatever. When I walked in to it, I remember coming in there thinking, this could actually be kind of sick, you know. <laughs> I just thought this could actually be sick. There's just a few things that we just need to just change up mm. in that, yeah. But I think that this could actually be sick, and then we ended up having a good night still. Do you know yeah. what I mean? We're like maybe what 150 ish people in there and also just to add so people can kind of picture it yeah that was around the time when lockdown was still prominent so mm. people were still used to sitting on a table right when you're out and yeah. about so when you walked in a lot of people were still seated on tables and chairs and stuff but you kind of knew that when it got to like the bulk of the night everyone would stand up and then yeah that's basically what happened yeah and then like we then ended up having <clears throat> I might need you to get bits of this on the screen by the way but I'll, do, I'll tell you in a bit but um, we, yeah, we ended up having a good night, whatever. Then Slick came on after me. And then I remember saying to him, like, you know what? Because 
They would be in R and B all day. He then came on and was playing more R and B and that. And then I said to him, "Do you know what? Change it just a tiny bit, yeah, but don't go too ham." And then he changed it and it just worked well. And then obviously ended it on Fong Song. And then from then we carried on. We what we started the next one, which was in February twenty twenty two, which was last year. And that was for me. You see that the first one in Amazing Grace, to me that was we arrived. Mm. That we arrived. The the feeling, the atmosphere in the room and all of that, it was such a sick party. Like such a sick party. And then from then, it was like, yeah, like we let's build now. From then it's just it's just been like hit the ground running and it's like everything's been taken care of. You think of a new idea. Because we're so we're veterans now, I guess, mm. in this event space now. So when we have an idea, we pretty much know someone who could execute it. So now it's just about, all right, cool, come to the next one, do this, do that, let's see how it works. And we're just fine-tuning it, fine-tuning it. But what we've got so far, nah. Yeah, it's nuts. It's, it's mad. I remember walking into um, the, the one, so the third one, which was in, well, yeah, it was fourth one it was technically the fourth one yeah 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 which was in site five oh. which was in a lot bigger venue go to my instagram quickly go to my instagram <clears throat> and um when i walked in there bro like <laughs> at first when i've come there and then like i've seen like the queue or whatever i'm waiting for my brethren and whatnot i'm um, scroll down keep scrolling um yeah when i've walked in yeah and i've seen like everyone inside also, the weather, the weather just slapped everything. Like, bro, oh my God. I just knew, you know what? Nah, we're just doing something. We're actually doing something special here. And it isn't even just like, it's not even just the fact that we've got such a good crowd, you know? I think also, I think like the way that we structure the music is so key. This is, I'm so strict on like the way that we do that. <laughs> bro, bro I'm so strict on it because I'm like, you know what? I know that, and this is look. The beauty is we're not the first people to do R and B events. Mm. There's there are there's been R and B events that's been going on for fucking decades. There's been people that are doing sick R and B events like all over the country and all over the world. And do you know what? To be honest with you, there's probably there might even be some that is better than ours. There might be, but we have a we have an ethos. For me, where I'm like, musically, we structure this a certain type of way, yeah? Mm -hmm. There's so much R&B to be played, providing everyone is on form and does what they're supposed to do, the vibe of the night will be sick. What what happens sometimes with DJs, Taser, yeah? Is that like, when you say, oh, we're doing an R&B event or whatever, we need you to play, the majority of DJs will come in and all want to do exactly the same thing. And it's boring for the person who turns up early because... They might come in early and it might be lit because everything's getting like all the bangers, everything, whatever. But then do you know what? Like after a couple of hours, it feels like they've been there for ages. Mm. And the reason why it feels like they've been there for ages is because they've heard everything. Oh, this DJ's played this one, that one, that this will get played. Like it's just, it's a repeat of every set. So I'm like, this DJ plays this genre for this amount of time. This one does that, this one does this. It's like everything just gets covered, yeah? And then that way, the vibe of the whole thing just works really well. And I believe, the one thing that I would say is, even though I know that there would be some that will be might be better than this, what I would say is, is that like, I don't think that it can be replicated, you know? I don't think that like, I don't think that someone is able to come in and basically do exactly the same thing in regards to the way that the music is structured. I just genuinely, you have to have the, you just need to find the right people to be able to do it. Oh. And that is difficult. And that is why sometimes I'm like, you know, one time when we went to one of the cities and that, I, told, I, I spoke to a specific DJ and said, yo, this is what we need um, at a certain time. Are you able to do that? He said, yes. I'm in the, the hotel getting ready. One of the guys that, we, that are working with us sent me some screenshots in the group, some, some Shazams. Yeah, when he's sending me the shazams of the rhythms and that, he's saying, "Is this okay?" I said, "It's not okay." I told him not to do that. Do you know what, Taser? He could just never play again <laughs> because I can't trust him. No, nah, no, nah, I hear you. I was literally gonna share a story like that. So before we did the Taser Black and Chucky, or Chucky and Taser Black R and B. So me and Matthew had a bar in Dalston, and ideally, what we wanted to do is open um, upstairs as like a lounge area, and then have like 
um, specific music. So Thursdays are supposed to be R and B, and then Friday, Saturdays, your private night, club nights, whatever. You can hire downstairs, hire upstairs, and then Sunday, I'm a piano. So when when I did the first faded R and B session that a lot of people came to, it was in Shoreditch, and it was like a hundred people calm, but it was like a sing along as well. One of the DJs I booked, he's a slow jam guy. So I said, all right, cool, I'll book you. Bro, the night 7 to 11, I think around 9.30, this guy's mixed a tune into Young Fug Lifestyle. Bro, I'll be honest with it you. It was so out of place, yeah. Everyone looked at me like, are you going to do something? I just filmed it. And I sent it to my other boy, Shorty, who's a DJ. I said, brother, what's this guy doing? I, I ain't booked him again. What are you doing? And I told you're the, you're an R and B slow jam guy. You say you're that guy. So why have you now come, looked up into the crowd, and decided you know what? This is the next tune I'm gonna play. Taser, listen, come here, mate. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You see, some of these DJs, some of them make me fucking <laughs> sick. You know that they get on my fucking nerves, <laughs> bro. You you know part of your, the job is to be able to just read the room, and also just to be able to understand the time that you're playing as well. Yeah. And like, I think there's a big issue. You know, okay, this is actually good, actually. <clears throat> One time, Hanif, my brother, yeah, someone I've known for a very long time, certified uh, promoter, he works with us, right, as well, do it, doing this. And and also, I, I do family with him as well, yeah. And I remember him saying to me, sorry, sorry, Hanif, I have to mention this. But sometimes he'd be like, oh, why don't you DJ for longer? Like one time he said to me, oh, you're scared. You're scared. Play for long. Oh, I haven't played for long. You're scared. I'm like, big man. Like, I'm me. I'm not, like, trust me. I have the utmost. I know what I'm doing, innit? I know that I could play well or whatnot. But sometimes, for the benefit of the night, if I know that someone is sharp, more match fit than me, or like a bit sharper than me on something or whatever, and we can bring them into the fold and make them play after me or before me or whatever, I'm so on that. And obviously, I really rate Slick. So like, you know what? There's times where I've done parties or whatnot and see the main the main set where I could do that and be the main guy or whatnot. Yes. Now nah, I'll give it to him. Because for me, it's like, one, obviously it makes him look sick because he's just doing whatever it is he's doing. But the most important thing is people just leave the night saying that was sick. Yeah. The night was sick. And that when people, when people leave a club night, yeah, and they say the night was sick, that means that all of us was good. It's not just about me. Mm. It's not just about me. It means that me, the guy before me, the guy before him or her, and then the guy afterwards or the woman afterwards or whatever, all played well. And the person that left is thinking, yeah, we had a good time. To me, that is so much better than people coming to a night and saying, Chucky was sick, but the night was shit. Like, it, was, uh, it was good for two hours. But when I got there, like it was shit before come there like after Chucks it just kind of just died and that and then we just left like my ego doesn't work like that and I know that it works like that for a lot of DJs for them they want to come in and they just want to be the star all the time if, if I'm saying to someone oh, do you know what can you come and do you know five till seven some DJs will look at that as a disrespect it's not mm. a disrespect this is a wicked opportunity as well to just come in and just like dig in the box and just play some tunes that just never get... I used to love doing that God, shit. Do you know how hard it is to book DJs nowadays? Because every, every single DJ has that um, perception of themselves that they're, they're a star and they should play um, between 12 and 2, for example, if it's like a club night. Or if it's a day party, they believe they should have 9 to 11. And I'm like, bro, like, I'm not going to discuss who else I've booked. That's one thing I don't do. I don't no, yeah. let another DJ know who I've got booked. I don't need you to be like... He's got my man, so yeah, cool. I should be a cool number two, because you might play the third DJ slot set, for example, room two, <laughs> three to four. That's not a par. Mm. That's the slot. That's the slot that's available. And here's the fee. Are you happy with it? Because remember, some of you lot say we should look at DJs as a job. This is a job then. Mm. But now you're looking at it as Champions League final, <laughs> and you want to yeah, do yeah, star yeah. boy, brother. It's not every day. But the DJs that we put on our roster, they get it now. Like, they actually get it. Whereas there's some we've trialed. I can't lie, Chucky. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, if the consumers like you, I'm going to keep you. But for yeah. me, you're messing up right now. Yeah, yeah. And then they'll hit you up like, yeah, so that was a great set yesterday. What was my next set? I'm like, brother. Yeah, that nah, can't work. <laughs> One time I've done an event, yeah? Um, nine till two in Shoreditch. The owner messaged me. I was like, yo, Taser, I don't expect you to be here at nine. 
but who is this guy you've booked? I'm like, brother, at nine, you're messaging me complaining. He's just warmed up the Syrah. <laughs> oh, shit. He's like, listen, I can't lie to you. The way he started, I know it's going to be a terrible night. And he's doing, 11 to, he's doing 9 to 11, the first two hours. By the time I've got there, about 9, 11.30, the door people, security, says, so your night, yeah? I'm like, yeah, yeah. They're like, who, who the hell was the first guy? I said, oh, Mark, was he that bad? They're like, listen. You know people start leaving and they're doing extra long in the smoking area? Yeah. No one's brought out a cigarette. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Security of clock, they're like, they're like, yeah, like there's just a mutual understanding that this this DJ is whack. But again, I booked him off the back of like, yo, I'm known, I've done XYZ, can I do your spot as well? I'm like, All right, cool, trial it out. Gave man a nine to 11, test it out, failed. You think I'm going to give you a 12 to 1 or 1 to 2? And that's not me. I wasn't even there to hear your set. That's just what the crowd are telling me. So clearly, and also there's different there's different spaces for DJs. Some DJs are literally for a restaurant. Mm. And that's not a par. Yeah, exactly. That's how you play. Mm. Some DJs can do the crowd where it's like 500 people in front of them, like Slick. Slick can look in front of him. Five, he's not panicking. No. I know what's going to get his crowd going. Right. There's even some nights here that I've, I, like, you're a sick DJ, but you needed a host. Yes, definitely. You needed a host. Yeah. There's that. That doesn't mean you've done a bad job. It's just you needed someone to kind of prompt the crowd every yeah, time just you... get into that next Yeah, piece. there's, there's, yeah, there's yeah, nights yeah. like that. Like, yeah. there's so many different types, but everyone wants to just, like you said, wants to do the star boy and run the through... Ego, the egos in and amongst DJs is as, is as loud as artists. And the thing is, it's like, I think, yeah, that having an ego, having an ego is good once it's channeled right. Do you get what I'm saying? When you channel your ego, I've got an ego, but I think you have to just channel that. You've got to channel that right. Because like, you know what? I just think sometimes people end up putting themselves or they end up blocking their own blessings because mm. of their ego. Do you know what I mean? They end up block, blocking their own blessings. But like, bruv, it's hard work, man. You tell a DJ, I just need you to specifically do this. Like, cause it's this time and I shouldn't even need to tell you to do this but I'm going to tell you anyway. And like, <laughs> half of them can't even do it. But we have found some good DJs that have been able to just play really well and like, they've just been super sharp and like created, like helped us to create such a, a good night. Um, go up a little bit. We went and did um, a pop in Brixton and like, that was a certified vibes as well. That's the go up. I think that was it. That was... That was... Um, like pop was... Pop was cold. <laughs> pop was cold. Pop was cold. And you know what as well? Like, you know you get the moments here where you play a tune and you just... Then I'm like, there's a couple of times where I've played a tune or whatever. I'm going to stop the tune now to go and go to the next thing and that. These lot are just... They just carry on. They want to go all the way to the end. I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's one of them nights. Mm. It's one of them nights. This... There's a bag of tunes that are going to go from the start <clears throat> all the way to the end. There's a bag of them. Come out. Oh, that was a good night. That know. was a great, that was a great night. Come and out. you know what, the, the maddest, sorry, sorry to cut you Chucky, the maddest thing about those nights here, no one wants it to end, you know? No. No, no, no one wants it to no end. No one wants it to end. That's why I think, that's why I think as well, that ending it, no, come down. Ending it at 11 is perfect, by oh, the so way. that was Halloween, bro. I didn't, I don't think I put, I did post a Halloween video. Did yeah, there? A, a video. Now the video's the, um, on the page, Donald Jones, isn't it? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go that's, to the... th that's um Brum in it. Which one's Brum? Go up. But I'm right, yeah, that's Brum in it. This one. Yeah. That's Brum. Yeah. That was Brum. That was Brum. I didn't post that's on the R and B page, I think. But um But yeah, like being I think for me, yeah, being able to go to other cities as and do it is like has been the coldest Brother, thing. It's so like, sick. when we first went to Birmingham I was like, right, that's sick, like we sold tickets in Birmingham and in Manchester, Manchester was the madness. <laughs> Manchester was the madness. I th honestly, that was like... Hey, ready? <laughs> Manchester was the... Like, out of, we've done... We've done... Um, I don't know about you, yeah, but for me, I think Manchester was probably the best one out of the ones that we've been out of the city. And that's not to say that the others weren't good, good but Manchester just had that. Nah, do you know, yeah, Manchester for me, because my, like, my little brother and his lot came Obviously, the man them came, and it's always fun when you're with your man them. Like out yeah. of London, it's always always love. But then the the city 
like the people that came. You know, did you did you see that there was like some some road use at the back? Um, when I say road use, I mean they look. I can't. I don't know if they're road or not, but they just had the gold teeth, the chains, mm. everything. Yeah. And one of them just said, "Come here, man." Walked over there. He's like, "Brother, see this thing that you and Chucky are doing? Respect you look highly, man." Like. Even I had to say, he said he sat down with the man and said, "Listen, it's a calm one today. We're going to go support Chucky and Taser. We're going to go it's behave, it, yeah. but we just know what's going on." Even what, one of my favorite parts of the night, of the nights that we do, is actually seeing the man them enjoy themselves. That's actually one of my most enjoyable parts, and the reason why it's one of my most enjoyable parts here is because an R and B night is easy for women to come out and enjoy themselves. It's easy when I see the man them come out with their brethren. And like, and they're enjoying themselves. Singing to each Listen, other as well. Listen, we, the second one that we did in Amazing Grace, I remember when we was on the way there, the man was in the group, right, it's heavily man in there. And it was probably a lot to do with the fact that we was posting a lot of stuff and whatever, and the man turned up and it was like, it was, it was male dominated. However, my, my opinion was, and it still is today, do you know what? Nah, it's fine. Let's not panic. Providing they are here for R&B, and they're here to enjoy themselves. They're here for the right reasons. I'm good with that. I'm actually good with that. And at that party, that's exactly what yeah. they did. They were like there with their brethren singing and whatever. Now, I say all of that because I even I was a little bit um, skeptical about even talking about it on this thing because <clears throat> on this pod because, bro, do you know what I don't want? Yeah, I really don't want anyone. I don't care how famous they are or what it is that they do, or their notoriety, or anything like that. Yeah, If they, if it's not for them, I don't want them there, bro. Mm. I'd rather them not be there. I don't want anyone to look at the, vi- the videos and that and think, oh, rah, this looks sick, I need to be there. No, do you know what? It's actually fine. You can even go to Faded or come to family. It's fine. Like I'm, I'm good with that. We've got, we've got something for you. But you see this, this is specific to something, yeah? And the people that are in here are in here with one love, and two, the, the, the common uh, ground of loving a genre of music, yeah? Like, let's not ruin that. Mm. Don't just come here just because you think that, uh, because it's sold out. That's the next thing. Uh, because it's sold out, now all of a sudden, you there's this extra desire to want to come. No, it's fine. Like, stay in your yard. If it's not for... What I'm going to start doing is, yeah? If it start, I mean, we're the, in the way that we're growing. If I start sensing that like we're getting people in there that are here for the wrong reasons. I'm hotting them up, bro. I'm gonna make it so awkward in here, in the room for them when they come. Because this is not for, this is just not for you. This one here. If you're standing, if you're standing there and there's even a couple of, uh, let's just say the most baitest Usher tunes get played in that and you still don't even know them. <laughs> oh my God, you're going to hear it from me. Nah, but everyone's going to hurt you though. That's the thing. It's a community. Everyone's going to hurt you. Yeah, like, to be. Everyone bits. is going to hurt you. Like, everyone. Like, you, you're going to feel awkward. Bro, Jazz Cafe, because even, oh, hey, okay, I know Chucky's going to touch on it, but I just want to fast track into that, yeah. So we introduced the karaoke version, should I say, which is, Eventually, because because of, of how sick the night went, it's gonna grow to be an extension of its own. It's not gonna be an R and B night instead of the R and B night, which initially people thought it was because we announced the karaoke edition. But that's actually gonna grow its own legs and become R and B, but karaoke. Literally, any venue we go, there's gonna be a karaoke side to it with that one, yeah. Because the way it ran on the night, Cold. I think I think it took people a while to kind of realize, all right, this is actually family. Like we're all, R&B pace, we're, all just, we're all just we're all just brethren in here. So I went first just to set the tone. I think I set it too yeah. high because I looked I looked to my yeah. left. Yeah, Chucky was looking at me like, bro, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> These times I phoned Chucky, you know, I phoned. I said, Chucky. What do you think about me playing this one? He goes, no, that's a strong one. I said, what do you think about me playing this one? Goes, that's strong too. What, are you going to do it together? I'm like, I mean, I could tell him to mix it. We're, like, we're having this conversation. Yeah. So I'm actually rehearsed the whole day. I'm driving, I'm going to the barbers, going to the gym, whatever. Yeah, like you rehearsed it. I'm rehearsing the, the, the bars to this song just so I know it. Because I know it, but I want to know it in front of people. Right, you know what I mean? yeah, it's different. So when it's like, yeah, karaoke time, like, I'm umming and ahhing, are we going to do this, are we going to do that? You know what, let me just set pace. And that's what that happened. Yeah. When that happened, yeah. I saw everyone in the crowd like, hold on. Okay. I see what's going on. Yeah. I think then Chucky did his. I did, do you know what? I didn't even plan to come, come out. Um, I don't think it's there. It's not there yet. I didn't, um, I didn't plan to do it. I knew I was going to do something because I was like, oh yeah. I'm no, I remember backstage we were talking about Beyonce. I was saying, yeah, I'm going to yeah. do something. 
But after you did that, I was thinking, right, I don't know how I'm even going <laughs> So I think this is the part that made the night so good. But bearing in mind now, I will say, if you see anyone else doing this, this because they catted the idea. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm coining this one. I'm coining it. I know that I know that it's it's happened accidentally in other places, but no, I'm coining this one. <laughs> 2023. I'm coining this is, it. This is our thing. I said, yo, do you know what? In my mind, I'm saying to myself, karaoke, there's a whole stage. There's an audience in front. I know that some people are going to be a little bit sceptical about writing their name down on the paper and standing on the stage and singing in front of people, even though they know it's a karaoke thing, yeah? And some people did write their names down or whatever, and they did do that, yeah? yeah. But I was like, you know what? My DJ right now is going to play some songs for half an hour. The microphone is vacant. Whenever you hear a song that you like, and it was like one of them proper old school mics as well. Whenever you hear a song that you like, take it. Jump up on the stage and just do your thing. So anyway, Slick's running some tunes, whatever. But no one ain't really coming up. Then he's done, done um, he's played Usher, oh, so you don't have to call. So I just randomly, then I just took the opportunity then. Mm. I randomly went up and then I just started doing that bit or whatever. And then I think like someone else came in and did it. And then once one, of the, once one girl come up and did it, then that was it. Free I'm going to plug it. Yeah, yeah. And it was res- like, it wasn't even, it wasn't messy. It was like, a tune would play, sometimes like, a tune would play, they might not even go up straight away, but the second verse might come, then someone would just come up and then they would do the second verse. And it was sick, like, man. What was sick was that like, this person from that friendship group and that one from that friendship group came up together and then they would just be singing yeah, or whatever. To- and the man then was up there doing their thing, not taking themselves too seriously and that. Bruv, it was fucking, it was, it was sick, so, man. so, so good. So good. And I'm so like, I'm looking forward to seeing how we can, develop that in different places. But first we just gotta build in we gotta build in um the cities that we're building at the moment, which is Birmingham, Manchester, Leeds, and then um we'll just start adding other places like Bristol. I know that like Bristol's been crying out for it a bit. Is where do you wanna go? I think we've been to the places that I'd have wanna go already. I think additionally, like I said, Liverpool. Yeah. I want to see what Liverpool's saying. Um, I've been, but I haven't been. Um, I do want to see how up north take it in regards to like Newcastle. Yeah. Um, obviously, we did Leeds. Leeds was good. I want Scotland. Yeah, you you said that. I'm like, mm, I don't. Now nah, Scotland, Scotland. Trust me. Scotland will surprise you. I think Cardiff will surprise you as well. Surprise yeah, it's so Cardiff. Well. Card- Cardiff. I think Cardiff will surprise you as well because I've done shows there in it as in like three shots. Oh, bruv. <laughs> Yeah, Cardiff. why are you saying it like that? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know why I'm saying it like that. Out of London is just, it's, <laughs> out of London is different, man. Like, it's different. I remember the first time when I was like 18, 19 and I travelled to like East and the excitement I got from like going East. Going East? Yeah, and then uni and the excitement I got from going to like other unis. Like, bro, I remember the first time I drove to Clapham on a Sunday afternoon and you saw all of the people running their dogs in the park I'm like yo you can just look out your window you're just seeing yeah I'm like South London is different you know yeah we don't have but what are you talking about Rowell Park we don't have that in nah. North West you know nah. but Gladstone Park it's not the same nah, nah. I was like bro you just got this on your doorstep in Clapham yeah. we don't have that so I'm like nah I gotta explore remember the first time I went Brum <laughs> what first time I went Manny first time I went Newcastle I'm like nah you might not just want to stay in London. I uh, know. <laughs> I'm telling you. You might just want to stay in London. You nah, you got to go outside. And then, <laughs> go outside. You know what? I think the more that you travel outside of London, the more you might even realise that you could live outside of London. And like, look, let's be clear. I, there's certain places I couldn't live. I'm, can I be honest? With you? Can I keep it 100? I'm going to keep it all the way 100. I couldn't live in Brom. <laughs> 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 You'd have to pay me the big bag to live there. <laughs> and I love Brom still. I love the man named from Brom, like, gal and that, like, whatever. But what, living there? Yeah, I don't know. Living there is too tech for me. But I, I'm at a stage now anyway where I just want to be away from the noise. So I, I'm good with living in a place where there's grass and, like, I'm I'm just away from noise. Because I can... I like the fact that I can be able to still be in the noise when I want to be in it. Koi came, by the way. Koi, she... Come down there, yeah. She came and celebrated her birthday at Box, um, Box Park. 
she really enjoyed herself in it. That was a sick one. Um, come out of that quickly. See that box part one, yeah. We had Donnell. Jo- I, what? I didn't. Even, we didn't even say that. A nah. whole <laughs> fucking R and B icon. We had a whole R and B icon there. But go on, sorry, bro. Wait, uh, big man thing. The picture's still up. What picture? Top left. Pull it on the screen. <laughs> come, come out. Go. Look. Yeah, this this one here. Is that oh. the one on the screen? Yeah. Why? Why shouldn't it not be? Do you know the ba- the backstory? You know this is on the screen. You can give the backstory if you want. <laughs> oh, on, the, on, the oh, on the screen of the pod? Yes. Mm. Oh, swear. Yeah. <laughs> you just wanted it up even more. <laughs> All right, take, take it off. Take it off. <laughs> take it off. Take it off. Wait. But man, look. Like, I don't no, know. No, I'm it, speculating here. It's true, though. No, but what you're what you about to say is true, though. You like With your chest like that brother. outside. Come on, man. <laughs> You're dying for it. Nah, his eyes are serious. Dying Bro, for it. Dying what, for it. The, word, the word is... He couldn't believe what was going on. The word is, is yeah. that there's, there's a few people that have attended some of our events. Don't, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Go on. There's a few people that have attended our events and then seen the pictures after and then basically asked us to remove. But we've basically mentioned that. Come on, man. If you're going to get your... If you're going to come... Because there's one... But there's one... There's a picture here. There's one road you that's come here. And... I didn't clock it was him until after. So I've mess- I've actually sent him the picture like, bro, this you? He goes, yeah. I said, why didn't you say what I'm going on today? He goes, obviously, I just cut through. You know what I mean? They're my thing. Yeah, me, but obviously, right. R&B's my bag. There's a lot of men whose r and their bag. They've just never had a night to go to. So, 100%. Yeah, 100%. this is... Nah, it's, just look at the, look at the go, vibes, go man. Go up again. Go up again. We do need to capture a lot more moments of people doing the, um, the new school stuff there. And it not just be all old school because it isn't just all old school. But um, go up. Lee's really surprised me. Back there, stop, stop. Under Chris Brown. Um, Lee's really surprised me. I didn't think. F- f- do you know what? When we had the um, the thing in the group that we sold two hundred and twenty three tickets, I was gassed off of that. Mm. I was like, "Rah, we did two. That's sick." Yeah, 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 in my yeah. head, what well, in Leeds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the final count was like three hundred and something at the end of it. I was like, I was gassed off the two because you know what, bro? We don't have to sell out everything when we got when we go into different places, in it. It just is what it is. We're building, but to be able to go there and still do that is sick. But Leeds was sick. Leeds was really good, man. The video um, looks like everyone was congregating around the DJ booth and it actually wasn't like that. No, 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 no. I think no. just that tune, Chucky's mixing, you can see me, I'm on the screens messing with the lights. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember Yeah, that. so every time there's like a little drum beat, I'm messing with the lights and whatever. So it just looked like everyone faced the DJ booth, but nah, it leads I want to bring it to like, I really want to bring it to Sweden. Oh, I really want to bring so it to... Cold, bro, do you know what's... He, oh. he, no, he doesn't understand. Like... I'm a man, yeah, if I see a motive and it's in my schedule and I'm free, I'm gone. So I went to Sweden on a Thursday by myself, major league with DJing out there and the club that they were DJing, I've been there. So I'm like, I'm familiar with this area, I know where to stay, I'm booking it. I've all messaged a couple of locals that I know, are oh, you not going to this event? They're like, yeah, pulled up, but I've gone by myself. Obviously, as soon as I've bumped into them, they re- they remember, man, innit? They're my bridging, cool. Well, I've gone, but I'm not in their space, but I'm in the VIP bit. When they clocked that I was on my own, brother, a group of girls came up to me, yeah? Oh, you're that guy on the podcast. I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, hi, let me bring my friends. Bro, all eight of them are nice. Mad. All of them. And then the man them came. That sounds like a lovely pack bro, of M&Ms. The, <laughs> the man them came, said they were all going, oh, Rob, what, you hear one, one man up? You know, like, if you go somewhere, like, even, for example, when we went to a city, I'm not going to say, the man them after were like, yo, what are you going to the after party? I'm looking at the man them like, if you're not getting there, I ain't getting there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you're right. not getting there, I ain't getting there. Like, exactly. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's certain places that it just felt like love. Yeah. This was one of them places that wherever these lot said they were going, I probably would have gone. Do you know what I'm saying? But for me, I was just like, you know what? Let me play it safe because i got to fly back tomorrow. Cool. But literally, I went there by myself. I didn't. I showed the man them who's on it because it's midweek. Some of the man them work. I knew they weren't going to pattern. Went there by myself. But if we go Sweden, ah, oh, the way they'll look after us, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, Sweden I definitely Crazy. want to do and um Dubai and um like another place in Europe though. I know that Dubai is not in Europe, but another like another place in Europe. I don't know where though. Like maybe Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Amsterdam, maybe Copenhagen. 
Like, yeah, we've, we've again, got... remember, this isn't like a club night. This is a, for me, the way that we see it, it's an experience. And the reason why it's an experience is just because of some of the things that we're trying to implement on the night and, and the music structure as well. Mm. Like, I think the music structure is what makes it different to what everyone else is doing. And that's good for all of us, actually, because there's like some really good R&B promoters that are like putting together their thing and they're doing it in their way and it's successful and it works out really well. And then you've got someone else over here who's doing their thing and they're doing it in their way and they're successful at doing it and everyone has a good time and and it's different to this one. And then we just add another component to that. Do you get what I'm saying? So, and we can all, ex- we can all coexist in the same space by doing our own thing. What I will say though, we might have to read we might have to at some point, and we'll talk about this in the group, you know, we, we don't want to play the same songs all of the time. However, when you're talking about classic R&B, there's so many of it, like there's so many songs, you just can't not play certain songs. But I do think that at some point, maybe towards the end of this year, we might have to retire Tevin Campbell, um, Can We Talk? We might have to retire it because it might become like candy. When we say retire it, we're not talking about your other raves we're talking about our, our rave right we're talking about us our rave yeah it might be a song that you just don't hear anymore coming towards because there's better other tunes because there's there's times i'm sitting and i'm like oh I should have and there's also songs that i have yeah that i know the crowd like the crowd know but it's not your instant oh my god and then sing along yeah so to the dj it could be oh, this tune in bang yeah but that's not the case it's not about whether the tune banged or not. It's about, right, I ain't heard this tune in years. Right. Because I've done it at, um, when we done the Faded r and I played Tanisha Kelly, I yeah. Wish You Loved Me. Right. That's a rhythm. Yeah, yeah. But play it, intro it, girls are like, oh, what's this? When it, but then it drops, they're like, oh yeah. They, they might not it, remember man. the lyrics. So um, you're not going to get a big sing-along, no. but, but that's a tune. Yeah, there's enough. There's, there's, that, that, and there's loads Campbell, of them. That Tevin Campbell song, it's been like interesting how it's got its resurgence because like back in the day, obviously it slapped. And then to be fair, in the city, when there was like the black city crowd, mustard bar, silks and spice and all of that type of stuff, that song slapped there and then. And then, and then it just never really existed anywhere but, else and whatever. You just mentioned the era that was so sick. But uh, we, can't <laughs> even, we can't even discuss that now. We've got to like do that another time. But I do need to do this before we go. Because I didn't actually, it was in my mind to say it and I didn't ask. So I'm going to actually put this in a different part of the pod. I was just quickly talking about some of the things that I didn't like, that was I was unattracted by with women, but you never mentioned anything. You didn't really mention anything. I did. What did you say? Food. Over, un- 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 oh, I, yeah, I agreed with you on that. Yeah, but to the that's... Food thing. Yeah. Um, is, there like, is there like something that you just really puts you off because I, I think that you're probably a lot like me in a sense that you can find so many different things attractive for, attractive when it comes to women do you have a type no right so yeah we're quite the same but there must be some things though where it's like nah nah this is not me do you know what a big thing is for me um smoking tobacco oh my god but I think it stems from my dad used to smoke tobacco and literally every time I was around him I used to get a headache I don't really respond well to tobacco. Is that so. a red flag or is that, is that, a, is that a game breaker? I, can't, I don't think I could be it with is. a woman that smokes cigarettes. It is. Like, if, if I want to be with you, date with you with intent and take you seriously, it is. Like, I can't be, do you know what? I don't think I could, I don't think I could be with a woman who is a, is a weed smoker. I could be with a woman who smokes weed occasionally. But like a full on, I can't go better. Every day I, smokes I, weed. No. I can't go better until I've hit one. No, exactly. And you know what? Then women keep are. Diff- road beside the bed, and, and you know what? Then women are difficult to give orgasms and that as well because their head's all in the cloud and that. <laughs> Fucking, you get one shake out of a leg. You know, <laughs> you chop a woman who smokes bare weed, yeah? And like, her thing is this. It just goes. <laughs> it's just like. And in the morning she's telling you, oh my God, I had such a great. Night. Yeah. See, so that's another thing as well. I need, I need you to respond. It, like we, we, we've got to be in, call it my ego whatever but I've got to know that I want to know that what I'm doing you like yeah I I'm want like, I want to be able to see I don't want you to tell me this time she's too buzzing to tell you that yeah. she's fucking so the next day she tells you oh my god last night was amazing from what I remember well what yeah <laughs> exactly 
She just you? remembers the spliff more than anything. But I think, you? yeah, big one, uh, smoking. Anything else? I can't take women that are intense. <laughs> Sorry. Or like the bunny boiler thing. I can't. Just intense. I can't. Constant intense, ringing. Though. Constant ringing. Constant texting. Constant needing this. Constant needing yeah, but what that. Do you, what do you do in that scenario? Okay, let me give you, let me give you a scenario of something that's happened to that. me before, yeah? And when it happens to me, a lot of people say I'm the bad guy. But I'm like, just because it was a moment for you doesn't mean it's a moment for me. So, example, you know that after you've done what you've done and you you know you both threw it down, yeah? And then she lays on you, she's laying on your chest and she's talking about like, oh my God, I can hear your heartbeat. This is so sexy. Or this is so sweet. Or this is what our future sounds like. I can't entertain that convo for the sake of entertaining the convo because of what just happened. Yeah. I can't do it. My mind will not let me do it. No. Have that like loving moment just because you just had sex. And then after it's like, no, but we're still, we're just friends or we're just casual. I can't do that. Wait, do you know what I mean? So you see that, like, you see that, like, for example, some, some, sorry, rah, some of my boys here yeah, can live in the moment and be like, just because we're, ha- forget everything else, just because we're having sex, whatever this sex comes with, I'm down. So if you say I love you, I'll say I love you back. Oh no, I couldn't do that. No, no, yeah, some people can That's do that. That's mad. The girl can turn around and be like, no, I just said it because it was the moment. And then you could like, yeah, I returned it because it was the moment too. I'm stopping everything. What? What do you mean? I love you. What? Just go with the flow. I can't go with the flow because I don't mean it. I just kiss the ear and just say, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just say, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I just say, like, yeah. I can't I do it. Does it. I can't do it. But yeah. if a girl requires me to do that, nah, it's a big turn off. Nah, I couldn't. It's a big turn off. Nah, nah. And there's some girls that literally, that, but it's just in the moment. Just say, I'm like, it's not just, just in, the, in moment. the moment. No, no, no. It's no, not just no. in the moment. No, it's not. Um, Taser, love for coming again, my bro. Come on, man. I uh, appreciate it, man, G. Is there anything that anyone needs to know about? Um, just go to slow, f- what's it called, hyphen jams.co.uk and go get a ticket, man. We've got four dates up now and we're working on a couple more. So just get your tickets when you listen to yeah, this. Yeah, www.slow hyphen jams.co.uk. We, what have we got? We got the 19. 19- Actually, no. don't even say because it just timestamped this thing. <laughs> they can go and check it themselves. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. by the, someone might watch this a year later. The, the website's still going to be the website. We'll, be, we'll have whatever we have, whenever we have it. And uh, look, only do this. Only do this if R&B is your thing. I, I please. If it's not, trust me, Taser and myself actually do sick events outside of that. Anytime people hit me sometimes, and like someone hit me the other day and it was like, oh, what's going on next week? I was like, go, go and check, go get faded. Um, oh, it's, fade, it's, it's faded events, by the way. Fade, oh, is faded it? events. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. The so go get faded was because we couldn't get faded. Someone still got the faded handle, but yeah, it's faded events now. Faded go events. Go to that. You hear everything there. Whatever. Um, I do a, an event called Family here and there. Um, the idea is that the people that come are like family, and you get what I'm saying. That check for me, even though they might not know me, they might just watch something, hear something, or just rate me as a DJ or whatever it is. Um, but you're all you're all welcome to come to those, and those those that's just not going to stop this thing here. Leave that alone. If R and B is your thing, then it's most definitely for you. And also, we're going to find ways of like introducing acts because I think there's certain people that we could just bring in that would just be sick. Like Ooh. Nipper, he's oh, yeah. cold. Lost girl talked mm-hmm. about her before. She's good. You know, there's um uh. There's just a bunch of, there's a bunch of artists, bro. Oh yeah, before we go, yeah, because I know you're, we have to leave, yeah, and there's always a moment in this pod where Chucky always asks me what am I listening to or am I doing right now just to leave a, a take home for the, those that are listening, yeah. There's a girl group in uh, New York, yeah, called, um, one sec, it's going on the Insta just to double check. So I follow one of them. Girl Code. Oh, wait. Oh, you no, heard of them? No. I've... Two girls, rappers from New York. They're, yeah. Ain't they battle rappers though? No, nah, but they just rap with so much vim. You'd think they are. They're not. I think I saw them on... Kate, on um... Funk Flex. Funk Flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They're oh. But they're cold, you yeah, know? Yeah, they're hard. They're hard. Like, no, no. They they dropped a, a video on, Inst- on sorry, socials. I think on Twitter. It went viral on Twitter. It's just them sitting on like a block with a fence behind them and they're rapping to um, Buster Rhymes. The dig- dim- 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 they killed that bro- nah they killed the beat they killed it killed it so from that I'm like what What did these girls do bro I've searched their what's their Instagram oh uh, so the the um one second 
She's, it's got, she's got a weird... Pull it on the screen. Okay, so the Instagram is the girl code. Yeah. Double L, double E. And then the two girls, are called, one's called Sha, um, Sha Bigger. That's the the dark skin one. And then High Sididi is the light skin one. But right. they're both cold. Like, with Vim. Like, nah, they're sick, man. And oh, I, okay. I, I wish them the best. Like, when they come here, I actually want to sit down with them and just chat to them. Yeah, I would like to chat with them as well. They are definitely sick. They're they cold. Sick. Check them out, man. Um, Subscribe. Subscribe. Thanks for listening, everyone, yeah? Taser, love and guidance every time, I'm Love. Here. Every time.